10th in Philadelphia. My mother, ever since she was a little kid, was always drawing, always visual. She was the only one in her family to be visual, whereas though my father, uh, his brother was a talented photographer, his other brother was a painter. He didn't end up pursuing it, but he was very talented. He met at my mother's going away party in Palton Village. Uh, she was moving up to New York. She had graduated from the academy. And so the story goes, my father saw her at a party and said to his brother, I just saw the girl I'm going to marry. Oh, yeah. My father pursued her in New York, and it was a long courtship. And finally he said, well, when you make up your mind, you let me know. Yeah. But I mean, he really pursued her. You know? It's funny because uh, my mother was Catholic before she met my father. She didn't get it converted on her own when she was 12. And she was so passionate about it that she had my grandmother send her younger two siblings to Catholic school and they were both bad guys Catholic. Um, my grandmother, her one concern, my father's grandmother, she didn't care about what race my mother was. She just said that she Catholic. So yeah. <laughs> she fit the bill. Back in the 60s and 70s, they would have my father's wealthy friends that were politicians in Washington sitting with his friends that were MOVE members, sitting with you know, I mean, there was just this whole mix of people that would come gather at his, at his place while he was working on the camps, while my mother was painting. She would go in the kitchen and cook up a, you know, plate of pasta and feed everybody. You know, the kids in the neighborhood were always welcome. The priest from the parish across the street would come over and join the mix. You know, and it was just this organic thing that grew. My mother started showing signs of sickness before she had me, but they were both you know, pish posh from the doctor, you know, and, and then after she had me, things had escalated to a point where, you know, surgery was unavoidable, uh, chemotherapy, radiation. A lot of her earlier work that I'm a big fan of uh, is dark and moody. I love it. But dealing with her sickness, she started portraying a lot more light, a lot more color. Because I guess there was so much darkness as it was, she wanted to portray light. She became more of a beacon of light in her work. I mean, it's not to say that she wouldn't deal with dark subjects, but uh, visually, the palette became a lot lighter. Right. The kids used to tease us on the block. Uh, the Adams family, mm. you know, or Morticia and Gomez, you know, or. Geez, we got it all. Um, I hate it. I hated the negative figures on the wall. I hate it. I just wanted to be like the Brady Bunch. I wanted mm -hmm. to be like everybody else. Why we can't be known? It all changed when I threw my first party in high school. Right. <laughs> it was like I was the cool kid. My art was always around me. Mm -hmm. I took the classes at Fleischer, uh, set weekend classes at Moore. But I'm the type of person when you try to push me. I'm going to go the other way. So I actually went to college to be a history teacher. I was not going to get into the family business. I swore, no, not for me. And the funny thing was, I was teaching a mosaic class to kids, and I ended up with my artistic mentor, Gail Scuderi, and I was having more fun, I think, than the kids were. You know, and Gail's like, OK, class is over. So like, well, let me get this, you know, let me get this done. And that was in 2005. And it just snowballed after that. I, my joke is, I could have saved myself a lot of student loan debt mm -hmm. had I known. Yeah. Because I didn't go to school for art. And I had the pleasure and the honor of being taught by all these wonderful artists, this incubator artists that were constantly around me. You know, study what I wanted to study. I did not, my field is a completely different direction than the family, mm -hmm. which I love. Because nobody could say, oh, she's making it on her parents' laurels, or she's copying their style. I'm stained glass, mosaic, and ceramic. Nobody in my family does that. And I'm an artist in my own right, and I have my complete own style. And it's fantastic, but I paint with glass. You know, I do my imagery in class. So 
I'm in a class by myself, you know, as a typical so I love that. I mean, uh, I grew up in the city, but I would look for nature where I could find it. And there used to be these beautiful uh, honeysuckles that used to grow along the fence. And it was all the University City High School's football field. But to me, that was my nature. You know, when I would walk along, I'd smell the honeysuckles and I'd see the birds. It was my little nature preserve. Okay, well recently, just a few years ago, that land was brought, they tore down the high school, and they tore down those honeysuckles. So, you know, I miss those flowers. So one of the things, my project I'm working on now is I'm going to do those flowers in mosaic, and they're going to hang on that gate. So I'm recreating my lost flowers in mosaic. Very nature themed, very environmental themed. It's funny, I did a big piece for my show at the African American that's in storage now because it's huge. It's five and a half feet by height, five and a half feet. And it was named Water is Life. And I, having grown up in the city, I didn't get to be around nature all the time. But all, my grandparents were farmers down south, and I think, you know, that's in my DNA. I used to always have a garden in my backyard in the city or my potted garden. You are part of nature. You know, you are as a human being. And here in the city, you know, here in the modern world, we've become disconnected with our nature. You know, you need water. You need these things to survive, you know. And art is a means of keeping you sane because you can speak about things through politics. You can speak about politics and things through your art that, or just the human condition, your depression, whatever have you. You know, it's a good release. Mm -hmm. You know, you end up being happier afterwards and have this great piece of art. Because art is just one of these great things that makes you, you can go anywhere and you can interact with anybody. So it's just a great medium. And it overcomes those things. It overcomes race, politics, money. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see, you know, more, more art for children. Sure. You know, it made a lot, big difference in my life. It's great therapy. You know, I hate the fact that one of the first things that are cut from the schools is art and music. It's funny, I went to school to be a school teacher and uh, history. And one of the only ways that I'll go to teach now is art because art transcends. The kids are having fun. It's, you know, almost like they're not in a classroom. You know, you need more of that. But what makes Philly wonderful is the community of artists, the support, the network that I inherited from my parents in terms of learning skills, getting material. Uh, perfect example, the other day I posted on Facebook. Uh, you know, you see the beautiful old churches. There was a style of stained glass done in the 60s that uses black glass and cement as opposed to traditional stained glass windows. And I said, I put up pictures and I said, geez, I would love to learn this old 1960s technique. And a girl comes over and she goes, I know how to do that. I have the supplies. I'll come teach you. So, I mean, well, you know, I mean, it's a network there. You know, I, I don't take advantage of it enough. And that's one of the things I want to do in the next few years is just focus fully on my art and, nur and nurturing that.